Deuteronomy 8. But then also, if you could grab Joshua 6, Deuteronomy 8, and then Joshua chapter 6. And I want us to read out loud Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1. We've read it before, but it's so relevant. And somebody said, why do we go over some of the same things again and again? Well, we're going to keep going over them only until we do them. <laughs> Isn't that right? It's not good enough to know them. We're supposed to, but be doers of the word and not hearers only. So God repeats these things to us until we do them so that we can see what God wants. Okay, here we go. Let's all read out loud together. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1. I'm going to read from the New King James Version if you, today. If you don't have that version, then that's all right. But follow along on the screen so we can all read the same words. Everybody together. Deuteronomy 8, 1, loudly and together. Let's read. Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. Now, let me read it back to you. Every commandment. Which I command you today. You must be careful to observe that you may four things. That you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. Everybody has a land. Everybody has a calling. Everybody has a purpose. Everybody has an assignment. But the majority. Thank you. But the majority of people do not fulfill their calling. Do not fulfill their assignment because there are so many obstacles, so many distractions, so many hindrances, so many other things to do, options, that they just don't get to it or just don't stick with it or just don't stick with it to the point that it comes to pass. And so the Lord here, he's so gracious to us, he communicates with us to help us to see what we need to change and adjust so that we can go to the next level and step by step take the land. It doesn't happen all in one step. It happens step by step. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon. You have to do it step by step and the Lord will help us. So now he's saying every commandment which I command you today. Most people say, well, yeah, I'm doing this or that. But that's not what he said. He said, no, no. Every commandment which I command you today. Now, this is not to be saved. Somebody said, we're, we're not under the law. We're not under the law to be saved. We cannot be good enough to be saved. There's no point in even trying to be good enough to be saved. We're saved by grace through faith. Amen? Amen. So that's settled. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're not just talking about being saved by grace and born again and having eternal life. We're talking about realizing the plan of God the purposes of God, the promises of God in our lives. You can be born again and be sick and die of sickness. You can be born again and be in such poverty and debt. You can be born again and be struggling with pornography and all kinds of other things. But that's not the promised land. The promised land is when the promises of God are coming to pass. Yes, there's a promise to be saved, but there are lots of other things. And one is the fulfillment of your calling and assignment. Amen. And to see all those promises come to pass, to have those assignments fulfilled, you can't just say, well, Jesus took care of it. He just paid it all. And so it's automatically going to happen. Well, OK, Jack, watch and see if it does. <laughs> but up until now, you can you, you may have noticed it doesn't just automatically happen. So the Lord comes and tells us. There are things that you need to do to position yourself so that I can continue to bring promise after promise to pass in your life. Because God is faithful. The problem is not on God's part. Amen? Amen. His word is truth and he is faithful. The problem is the devil and then us, our flesh. So every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. Now let's go over to Joshua chapter 6 here. 
And let's notice what it says. Let me begin to read from verse 1. Now Jericho, so they get across the Jordan here and they come to the very first city. City number 1. And it says, Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, none went in. Every time I read that verse, I think about uh, an event that happened some 30, over 30 years ago. I was talking to my brother David about this scripture. I said, let me show you something. Let me show you something. And I read this. Now Jericho was securely shut up because the children of Israel, none went out, none came in. I was going to get to the part where, and the Lord said, see, I've given it to you. And my little four-year-old daughter, Alexa, she said, Daddy, we don't say shut up. <laughs> and I said, what? And she said, we don't say shut up. I said, I didn't say shut up. She said, yes, you did. And my brother said, yes, you did. <laughs> you said Jericho was securely shut up. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, we don't say shut up. But yes, this, this is a different thing. Anyway, okay. <laughs> now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, see I have given Jericho into your hand, its kings and the mighty men of valor. Now, the first verse said, Jericho's locked, barred, gates are closed. You cannot get in. Nobody can get in. Nobody can get out. And then the very next verse, the Lord says, Joshua, see, I gave it to you. And not only the city, its kings, the mighty men of valor, the whole thing. Now, what does that mean? See, I gave it to you. See, I gave it to you. Well, God had said to Joshua in chapter 1, the 8th verse, he said, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that's written in it. Well, the only book of the law he had was Genesis through Deuteronomy. But he saw the miracles, the signs and wonders in Egypt and the deliverance and everything. And God said, keep the words in your mouth so that you can observe to do according to that level of the power of God, opening doors, delivering you, etc., etc. And so now God is coming to him and saying, I know with your physical eyes, everything looks impossible, like this is not going to work. The promises are not going to come to pass. But Joshua, you're not just looking with physical eyes, right? You've been looking back at the word and seeing that my power overcomes every obstacle. Amen. So Joshua, you do see it, right? You do see that I gave it to you, right? Do you see it, Joshua? Joshua, do you see it? Can you see it, Joshua? See, we have to see it inside to have the faith to be obedient to God when it looks impossible. Amen. Okay. so see, I've given it to your hand. Verse three, you shall march around the city. All you men of war, you shall go around once uh, the city once this. You shall do six days. And the priest, he goes on to say, are going to blow the shofars ahead of you and such. And verse 5, and it shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet that all the people shall shout with a great shout, then the wall of the city will fall down flat. And the people shall go up every man straight before him. So what is God saying? So you're going to march around once a day for six days. And on the seventh day, you're going to march around seven times in faith. And then at the end. The priests are going to blow those shofars. And then I want everybody to shout with a great shout. What does that mean? It can't be a fake shout. Praise God. <laughs> you know, you know how we are. Give a shout to the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. But inside, I don't see it. We've been marching around this thing for seven days. There ain't no crack in the wall. These guys are making fun of us on top of the wall. And now you want me to shout with a great shout like something's all, all, all of a sudden going to happen? Yes. Yes, that's exactly what God wants. Why? Because we believe him. You can only shout with a great shout when you believe him. You know, I tell you, I've been in a lot of services where somebody's up there and they say, come on, let's shout to the Lord. And then I have this thing going on inside. I'll always shout. I'm not just going to stand there. I'll always shout. But am I shouting in faith or am I shouting because we're supposed to shout? And I want to please the Lord. I want to shout. But does my heart really feel the faith? 
am I shouting in faith? See, this is what the, what the Lord wants. He wants us to shout in faith. Amen. How many of you know the spirit realm knows the difference between faith shouts and shouts of jumping through hoops? Amen. OK, so he said, then you're going to shout. Now look at verse 10. Now, Joshua had commanded the people saying, you shall not shout or make any noise with your voice, nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you, shout, then you shall shout. Now, why is that? Because Joshua was one of those two spies. He was one of the two of the 12 that were sent. And 10 of those spies came back, opened their big mouth and started speaking out of their emotions. And started saying, oh, it's a land of flowing milk and honey. It's good and all that, just like the Lord said. But there are giants there. There are fortified cities. There are big armies. There are, those guys are tall. We're short people. And they're tall people. You remember this? They started speaking their mind. They started speaking the thoughts and the fears of their mind. And they discouraged everybody's hearts. And guess what? Joshua knew it cost us 40 years. And it cost that whole generation, except Joshua and Caleb, their promised land. Because of their, your big mouths. Didn't he? Isn't that right? So he's saying, no. So you're not going to say a word seven days marching around this place. And he said, not only are you not going to say a word, but I don't even want a sound coming out of your mouth. Why? Because some of you, you know, you may not speak any unbelief and doubt and fear, but you'll go. Ah. He said, no, you, you don't even make a sound. Lest you discourage your hearts. Is that right? Yes. Joshua not stupid. He'd been through this. He's saying, hey, I ain't going for another 40 years. How many of you say amen to Joshua? We ain't going another 40 years. What does that mean? We have to shut our mouths. And we have to stop, you know, when God's telling us what to do, we have to stop saying, oh, I can't do it. I can't do, can't do Jesus Church. Don't say that. Why? Because if you say that, you just created a wall. You just created a barrier for yourself, a stronghold. You're creating your own strongholds from being obedient to what the Lord is saying. But you say, yeah, but I just don't know how I'm going to do it because of the schedule, what I have going. Well, that's a different story. But then just say, well, I don't know how the Lord's going to have us to do it, but he'll show us how to do it. Amen. See, speak what God is speaking. He'll help you. He'll show you. But you don't say, no, we can't do that because that's what cost the promised land. Can you see the difference? OK, so let's go over now to the 18th verse. And Joshua gives this instruction and you by all means abstain from the accursed things, lest you become accursed when you take of the accursed things and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of bronze and iron are consecrated to the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the Lord. Uh, so Joshua told the people, he said, now, look, when these walls fall down flat and we go in here. There are going to be lots of things there. There's going to be accursed things like idols, things that we, the people of God, should not be touching. Other people touch these things. They watch these things. They listen to these things. They enjoy these things. They speak these things. We do not. Because we're the people of God. You do not touch accursed things. Why? Because every commandment which the Lord your God commands you today, we must be careful to observe it. So we don't do that. And he said, not only that, but all the silver and the gold and the wealth, every bit of it comes into the treasury of the house of the Lord. Don't take any of it. Now, why? Because this is the first city. Now, after this city, they could keep the spoils and were blessed, but not this first one. Why? Because we have to establish God gets the first. Can you see this? So don't you do it. Don't you do it. Do not touch the accursed things and do not take any of the first. OK, so notice this. Let's come over to chapter seven now. But the children of Israel, verse one, but the children of Israel committed a trespass regarding the accursed things for Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah. I'm a, God's saying, I'm going to name him. I'm going to name his daddy. I'm going to name his granddaddy. I'm going to name his great granddaddy. And I'm going to name the tribe he's from. Why? 
because they violated what I said. Let me tell you, God is not just some cloud in the universe just floating around that doesn't have a mind. He speaks very clearly. And he's expecting us to adhere to what he's saying. And so God is saying, yes, I want to name who this is. Verse two. Now, Joshua sent men from Jericho. Now, Joshua is oblivious at this point. He has no idea that a compromise happened. So he sent men from Jericho to Ai, a little little town, which is beside Beth Avon on the east side of Bethel and spoke to them, saying, go up and spy out the country. See, he's ready to go on to the next town and take it. He's going to conquer the land, which he should be doing. So he said, go out and spy out the land. So the men went up and spied out Ai, verse 3, and they returned to Joshua and said to him, do not let all the people go up, uh, but let just two or three thousand men go up and attack Ai. Do not weary all the people, for the people of Ai are few. So about three thousand men. So Joshua went with the higher number, two to three thousand. He went with three thousand. And uh, and guess what happened? They went up there uh, from the people, but they fled before the men of Ai. They got spanked. They fled before the men of Ai, and the men of Ai struck down about 36 men. For they chased them from there before the gate as far as Shabaram, and struck them down on the descent. Therefore the hearts of the people melted and, and became like water. They got beat. And the hearts of the whole nation melted. Why? I thought God said he's going to fight for us. 36 men died. 36 wives are bereaved of their husbands. Considering the multiple children, 100 plus children just lost their fathers. I thought God said he was going to keep his promises. I thought God was going to be on our side. This is just a little town. And we lost. And we were embarrassed. This is only town number two. Is this going to be hit and miss with the promises of God? Sometimes he keeps his promises. Sometimes he doesn't keep his promises. Like a lot of believers think. As if God is a so because he's a sovereign God, he just makes arbitrary decisions and you can do everything right. And God just says, no, I'm a sovereign God. So in my wisdom and foreknowledge, I just see that it's best that in this particular case that I use this not keeping the promise to teach you something or that because I see what's in the future, it would be better if I don't keep my promise. That's all lies and nonsense. And the Bible says that's lies and nonsense. But yet people preach that and teach that today and somehow think they can weave their their doctrine around and not just openly say what they're saying, that God doesn't always keep his promises. That is a lie. And Joshua, because he didn't know what happened. And this is what happens with ignorance. When you don't really see what's going on in the spirit realm and reality, you will jump to conclusions and put God on the hook as if he's the one that changed. And so notice this. Verse six. So Joshua tore his clothes and fell to the earth on his face before the ark of the Lord until evening. He and the elders of Israel and they put dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, Lord, why have you brought this people over the Jordan at all to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Oh, that we had been content and dwelt on the other side of the Jordan. Why did we even come over here to try to get promises to come to pass, get our hopes up like you, you were really going to do it? Verse eight, oh, Lord, what shall I say when Israel turns its back before its enemies for the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of, uh, inhabitants of the land will hear it and surround us and cut off our name from the earth? Then what will you do for your great name? Watch the Lord's response in verse 10. So the Lord said to Joshua, get up. Why do you lie thus on your face? Israel has sinned. Why are you lying down there as if I made the decision not to keep my promise? 
This is not a problem with me, Joshua. This is a problem with Israel. Something went wrong because I told you every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply and go in and possess it. And I gave you very clear instructions with Jericho and there was a gross violation. So don't say that it's me that changed. Amen? Amen. Can you see this? Okay, watch this. Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them, for they have even taken some of the accursed things and, and have both stolen and deceived, and they have also put it among their own stuff. They put some things that I told them was mine among their own stuff. Oh, it's so easy to do. When we get paid... And there's that 10% of what we get paid, that tithe of the Lord, is holy to the Lord. Before we give it to Him, it's holy. It's just so easy just to spend it and do whatever and ignore what the Lord says. It's just so easy to do out of fear. Or just saying, oh, I'm not going to do that. I need it. Put it among their own stuff. Verse 12, therefore, therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies. God said, that's why they lost. Not because I'm not doing my job as God. That's why they lost. Thank God for his word that clarifies so we can understand. Problem is not everybody's preaching the word and showing us what God said so that we could say, oh, let me make that adjustment here because we don't want to lose. How many of you want to stop losing? Anybody else? I don't like losing. And God doesn't like us losing either, by the way. He said, therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they have become doomed to destruction. Neither will I be with you anymore unless you destroy the accursed things from among you. You, you got to get that out. That Jesus said, listen, if your hand caused you to sin, cut it off. If your foot caused you to sin, cut it off. If your eye caused you to sin, pluck it out. What is he saying? It, it's going to be uncomfortable, but if you can't keep yourself from violation, then you need to do something uncomfortable to stop it. Amen. Amen. Somebody's thinking... This is not the most encouraging message I've heard. <laughs> All right, now watch this. Let's go over now to verses 20 and 21. So, so here's what happened. So they came before the Lord and they said, Lord, okay, nobody's fessing up to this. So tell us who did it. And so they cast lots and, and the lot fell on Judah. And then they cast lots again and the lot fell on a certain clan within Judah. And they cast lots again, and the lot fell on a certain family. And then they cast lots again, and the lot fell on Achan. And so now Achan is standing there before Joshua, and Joshua said, boy, you give glory to God. And you deliver the whole nation of Israel from trouble. You tell us what happened. And look at verse 20. It says, and Achan answered Joshua and said, indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and this is what I have done. When I saw among the spoils a beautiful Babylonian garment, what is he saying? Oh, it was going to go to waste. That was a beautiful garment. That thing was nice. I could just picture myself wearing that, or I could picture I could sell that. Oh, it is just going to go to waste. I saw that beautiful Babylonian garment. 200 shekels of silver. There were 200 shekels of silver right there in front of me. Like it was right there. 200 shekels of silver. And not only that, a wedge of gold weighing 50 shekels. And watch this. I coveted them and took them. 
And there they are, hidden in the earth in the midst of my tent with the silver under it. What happened? I saw that and I coveted that. See, we, we didn't have a problem with the walls of Jericho. We got a problem on the inside. Inside, I know what the Lord said, but inside there are things I want. I know what the Lord's word said. I know what God's word says. But, oh, I want him. I want her. I like him. I like her. I like that. I like to look at that. I like to watch that. I like to listen to that. I like to be around them. My heart wants these things. And I know what the word says, but my heart still likes it. And so when I saw I had to make a decision and I wanted it. And I couldn't stop myself from taking it, from doing it, from watching it, from listening, from pursuing it. How many of you know this is not just Aiken? Because every one of us have violated this. This is where we thank God for the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who paid for all of our sins. Can you say amen to that? See, this is not me looking down on you and saying, yeah, this is this is God's word looking at us and saying, hey, this is not just Achan. And why is God doing this anyway? Oh, it's just God always just wants to judge us and make us feel bad. Boy, do you, do you not get it? God's trying to bless us. He wants to, he, he didn't want this to happen. He wanted to knock out every one of the enemies in front of them, give them the promised land. God wanted them to dominate so, so much and get the, the crops going and give them the rain and cause their flocks to multiply and such so that they would, their cups would overflow and they would tell the whole world, man, you guys should serve our God. But God can't do that if they disrespect him, disobey him, why? Because it would send the wrong message to the nation. You don't even have to really obey him. Just act like you're going to. Because he really won't even know. Just like a big fluffy cloud in the universe. Do you understand? See, so this is why God's saying, no, you, you have to do it with me, though. You have to respect me. I'll have grace and mercy on you, but, but you have to treat me like I'm real and what I'm saying like it's important. He's not being unreasonable. He's being loving. And the fact that our God, instead of just looking at this and just crushing all of us, no, he comes back and he humbles himself down to our level and communicates to us with language we can understand to help us so that we can repent, receive grace and mercy, and the strength of the Holy Spirit to make the adjustments so that God can bless us yet again, take us another step farther into the promised land. How many of you can see God is a good God? But he has to walk it through in reality and deal with the likes of us. And thank God he does. Isn't that good? Thank God he does. Thank God he does. And so, what is the Lord saying to us today? The Lord's saying, I've called you into the promised land. I've called you into the promised land. But I'm stopping here to say that the reason you're not making progress in certain areas is because there's some things out of alignment. But I'm pointing them out to you so that you can get them into alignment. And let me tell you something good about God. You can come to God and say, Lord... I'm confessing this to you that you're pointing out. I'm going to confess. By the way, let me just tell you, it is completely, wholly disrespectful when we come and the word of God speaks and the Lord speaks down in our hearts and we walk out and we say nothing. And he watches us walk away, get in our cars and go home and say nothing about what he said. Talk about an ultimate slap in the face. 
And then we say, speak to me again next time. Why? Why? You don't even respond. You walk away like I didn't even speak. I took the time to come and to tell you exactly what to do. And you don't even respond. You just act like, oh, I'm in a big crowd here. And okay, we'll come up, stand, bow my head, and, and walk out. And okay, we did our church thing. And God is saying, that's not the way I treat you. I'm communicating with you. I'm talking to you in, in real, clear terms with, with clear language to help you. Respond to me. Tell me that you understand what I'm saying. And, and I know that you're having trouble doing these things. Ask me to help you. Tell me you want to obey. Ask me to help you. I'll fill you with my spirit. If you ask me and give me permission, I'll come along and help you do it. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Amen. Is that right? Amen. How many of you can see? See, God's going to take us into the promised land and he'll supply the power. But we've got to respond to him. We've got to communicate with him here. So we do need to confess when we sin because we all we all sin. And ask the Lord to help us and strengthen us. Isn't God good? Yes. So we got to get our mouths in line. When the Lord says, here, here's what we're doing. Then your mouth says, that's what we're doing. I don't know how we're doing it. But I, what I do know is we're doing it. And the Lord's going to show us how to do it. Amen. Can you see this? Yes. This is the way we follow the Lord. It's the only way to follow the Lord. Amen. We keep our words in alignment with the Lord. God is good. Bow your head with me right now. Would you right now, you and God, right there, just mutter a response to God. Lord, I hear you speaking. Thank you for speaking to me, Lord. You have not given up on me. Because I can hear you speaking, that means you have not given up on me. Thank you for not giving up on me. Thank you for speaking. And Lord, this is what I hear you speaking. I acknowledge. I acknowledge you speaking this to me. Out of your love and grace mercy and Lord I confess whatever I have not been doing that you're call, you've called me to do Lord I confess that wash me in the blood of Jesus wash me in the blood of Jesus fill me with your spirit Lord strengthen me to do what I cannot do in, in and of myself. Strengthen me, Lord. Strengthen me, Lord. Strengthen me, Lord. In the name of Jesus. And with your help, I will fulfill my calling. Only through you, Lord Jesus. Only through you can I do it. But I believe you're with me. I believe you're with me. Let's stand together, can we? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Would you lift your hands before the Lord? Some, I know this makes people feel uncomfortable, but I'm sorry. We're not here to play games with God. I'm not here to try to grow a church. We're here to be the people of God that he wants us to be. To honor him, to serve him to fulfill the assignments on our lives. Would you say to the Lord, Lord Jesus, thank you for your grace, your sacrifice, the blood that you shed to wash me of my sins. I receive it today. Once again, fill me with your spirit. Strengthen me to fulfill my assignment, to live the way you've called me to live. You know me, my strengths and weaknesses. Strengthen me, oh God, to do better than I can do. I can do all things 
through Christ because he strengthens me. I invite you, Lord, to strengthen me in Jesus' name. Let's sing this little song. Adriana, lead us, would you? Jesus, I, I will follow you. Nothing in this world will do. I yield all that I have in death and trust you, Jesus, to the end. I am yours until the end. Let's raise it. Let's sing it one more time from your heart. Jesus, I will follow you. Nothing in this world will do. I yield all that I have and death and trust you, Jesus, to the end. I am yours until the end. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you will fulfill your assignments. The Holy Spirit will strengthen you as you continue to invite him, yield, yielding yourself to the Lord. He will strengthen you. He will not give up on you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And he will stick with you all the way through battle after battle until you fulfill the assignment that the Lord has on your life. Because our God is faithful amen. to his promises. Can we say amen? Can we clap in agreement? Jonathan?